Welcome to War Blog. Today I'm going to look at this Starome or Sco out assault. I just did this sort of almost randomly following on from this because I sort of felt that this was sort of <laughs> one of the rare Russian advances. So I thought I'd do this because it was a it was the first thing I saw that was sort of Ukrainian. Um, and it was designed to be quite simple. In fact, I want to do more of these simple ones because it just takes too much time. I was thinking back to when I did the Syrian Civil War, I was doing one every day. And um, embarrassingly enough, the best war ever comes along. And I have done nothing, really. It's not as though I haven't been looking and sort of thinking, oh, God, I'm just so, you know, busy and things. And not busy really doing much either, that's the thing. But, um... And then... I wrote this up yesterday, or the the map, I had to put the units on just now, and then this came on, the Rabotino, uh, Voyo, whatever it is, and so I'll have to do this, but this looks like quite big, um, but what I've done with this one, I did want to do it smaller than this, but the thing is, it's one of these things where you sort of have to keep something in every hex, that takes a bit of time, and it makes it quite complex, whereas really, I'd only really want one of these blobs coming in, to sort of attack to demonstrate what they're doing um, and then obviously this other one which I can't pronounce has come along where they've you know, over a hundred vehicles are involved but what I also have done with this because I was thinking I really have to do some more of this stuff because I, I really enjoy doing it you know and it's just time so I've given the well I've given the Ukrainians some drones so these were from the Yemen campaign so these are sort of one zero these represent those sort of bombs that are dropping from their regular drones, which strangely enough seem to be blowing tanks up. I think they're trying to hit the air vents or something. Um, but and you would have thought that they would do something about that. But anyway, but I've also included Lancet, so that's a new counter, um, and it's got. I don't know about the strength because it's sort of it seems like a nuclear bomb there. I put in some codes so if it's um, if it's actually targeting a if the, if the damage again is, is is against one of these, then it um, it's two and a half times. So I might reduce it in strength to make it sort of more five. And then when it hits, it does. I mean, I just did a test. I've done one test and it did five damage, which is sort of fifty percent and. So I don't know, this is the first time around, but what I've tried to do is give the Russians not a lot and to see whether the minefields slow them down and their lancets, which are picking off the artillery armour well, are, are, are sort of effective, so to speak. Um, and, and to just see how this smaller one plays out, but unfortunately it's not really that small. You know, I mean, if you look at that, it's not small, small like I really want it to be. Um, so, and it seems to me that they've actually been attacking this place, which is interesting because it's against this river. I've given it a full river, it's a big river as opposed to a small river, so it's not crossable. So this is completely useless hex because they're never able to come through there. Um, but let's just play it. I'm cooking as well, so I might get a beep in a bit and then start eating. <laughs> And there's the beep. I I have to leave it for a bit because otherwise it'd be too hot. Oh. Right, so it's the Ukrainian turn. Why is it all up like this? That's strange. Anyway, not to worry. Right, so we've got so we don't have much artillery, so I've given them less artillery. And I think that the thing is that they don't have as much artillery as they would really like, you know. And I think some of the commentary I've read is basically stating that this is, whole war is, is an artillery exchange, and it's just about who has the more more artillery. Um, but anyway, I've, so I've limited the amount of artillery, but I've given them these, and I've given them quite a few, to be quite honest. Um because I don't think they can, the Russians can shoot them down, but I don't think they're very effective either. So why don't we start off with dropping some of these bombs into these Russian trenches, which we've seen a lot of. 
So we're just dropping a little bomb in there. And we've done some damage. Let's drop another one. And done some more damage. So they're doing some damage. Uh, the thing we've got to do is remember where that unit was. Because we sort of blew it up there. And obviously we're not going to be attacking that one. So that's a bit of a waste. So what we've got to do is figure out what we got here. Okay, so we got tank, mechanized, irregular. We've got some irregular and we've got some... Now the thing is, I think the problem I've got is I forgot to give the the many engineers. So I'm going to pause it and then get my food and add some engineers. Okay, um, well I didn't really need to do that because the engineers do come on um, later. That they're reinforcements, but I've added another one in there. So we can start again, so we didn't need to bomb that one. So I think thinking of the engineers, I think we want to sort of at least try and break through and make an initial breakthrough here, but we can't, we can't get there. So that's pretty useless. Uh, I'm going to start again. Because I've got to have a plan of action. So we're going to play. I'm cheating there a bit, but I, I'm only half thinking, so my brain doesn't work anymore. That's probably why I'm a bit slow. Right, so they'll be able to, they can't do anything now. It's always worth checking to see whether there's an error in my game. No, they can't. So um, they're going to try and do that next turn. Obviously, we've got some mechanized coming in. Now, the thing is, we could sort of try and drive straight through this minefield. And I'm tempted to do that. Let's just see whether we can do here. So we're going to drop our artillery here. Point three five. Oh, yeah, but the thing is, as soon as they go into the minefield, that'll be their turnover. those zeros and let's try dropping mortar bombs on them that was aborted point one zero So, what I'm going to do next reminds me a bit of, that was aborted. That wasn't very good. What, what I'm going to do next reminds me of what we're seeing in a lot of these videos. I'm just going to drive my mechanized into this minefield. We didn't blow up. We got in there fine. And I'm going to move my tanks into this minefield. We got a little bit of damage. 0.6. Okay. And I'm going to commit these into there. And they got in, so we got very little damage. I mean, I could maybe put them up to two, but that would just be me cheating. He can get in there. Point nine. So there are a few legs blown off there. So we're going to try and break through here, even without our engineers. These irregulars are preparing to exploit down this road if we can engineers can open it up and here we've got armor We don't, 
we're going to have to drive through the minefield with our tanks. Well, you know, I mean, poor planning. Point one. Point seven. So we probably lost the tank there. Point one. So we've, we're losing things to mines, but not to a great extent. Right, so now it's the Russians' turn. And now we get to use our lancets. So let's see what sort of damage we can do against these lancets. And we will get double damage on here because we've got two in a stack. So we're going to have to go for that. Let's see what this does. Two and no effect. Let's go for another one. 4.5 and 4.75. So basically our lance is 6.6, 4.85. I'm just going to pause it there for a couple of reasons. Okay, so I'm sort of back. You probably don't notice. And maybe I should just try and seamlessly put it in the pauses without mentioning it. But um, what I'm trying to do here is to sort of balance off because it's my idea that if they just approach with, say, just this little group of tanks, we can blow them all up. But if they approach with more tanks than we've got lancets, then obviously they're going to suffer fewer losses. Which is sort of the whole reason I've sort of set this up. But the artillery seems to be doing a lot. And I think a lot of it is because the artillery is, is a little more controlled. I was looking at this thing about a crab or something, some crab, and it, you know, it just fired one shell and it hit the tank, you know, sort of multiple miles away. So they're obviously clever, but look, I mean, our artillery just did a lot of damage, but the damage to the tank is actually, artillery damage, I think, is reduced a bit, but. Well, we're going to do some more because I want to see if we can destroy this stack. I think we will. But the thing to bear in mind, now the thing is, again, what I've heard, well, basically what they're saying is, you know, they, they are prioritizing the tanks. I mean, what they mean by that is they're, <laughs> they're, their lancets are, pri are going for tanks. They're not doing the EMN special where they're using whatever the cost of a, a, an ATGM is. You, you know, uh, one of those proper guided anti-tank missiles to take out one person. I'm not sure that, that was really cost effective, um, you know, to take out a stone wall embankment. So they're focusing their artillery and all the expensive stuff on this and the infantry can deal with the infantry. Um, but we've done a lot of damage over here. But... I'd like to do, I'd like to give it a bit more because we might get a route. I'm not going to do any more than this. We've got a one route and the other guy is unhealthy. So that's good enough. So we've got a lot of smoke coming up here and a lot of, um, we've got a lot of, oh, <laughs> yeah, those are South Front videos, aren't they? Because they're the Ukrainian tanks on fire. If you want to see the, the Russian tanks on fire, you have to watch the sun. <laughs> uh, I've been watching some of this Twitter stuff and it's actually frustratingly bad. You, 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 you know, just the, th the comments and the way they do it, it's just, it, it's frustrating really because a lot of these people don't know what they're talking about. You know, no understanding of the Minsk agreements or things like that. And um, they just seem to laugh at the pain and misery of, people dying which isn't you know isn't funny to so you know but the sun readers are sort of you know i think this is a combination of which side you're on to which side you want to see which side you want to see suffering but at the same time you know the comments they make are just sort of you know people saying oh you know obviously they need more we need to send them more of this more of that you, you know, and then they they just don't really fully understand sort of what they're saying, really. Um, especially when it's sort of coming from someone's pocket. I saw quite a good video on Twitter because I don't usually watch Twitter, but I watched it 
and it was in German, I think, and it had some German officers. They didn't look like Nazis, they just looked like German officers, and they came in to a family's front room, and they were just sitting there having their tea or something, sitting on their sofa. And they started taking all their stuff, taking all their belongings and their um, TV and all the stuff on the sideboard, and, and then they put a picture of Zelensky up and saying, Heil Zelensky. And in the end, they leave the family with absolutely nothing. It's the man, woman, and their little daughter. And in the end, the um, the, the sort of Gestapo-type woman in charge of these four or five military-type people taking all their belongings to pay for the Ukraine war after putting... The only thing that left them was a picture of Zelensky on the wall. She grabs the little girl's leopard which is, you know, obviously an ironic reference to the leopard tanks, but she takes it anyway, a little cuddly leopard toy. But um, you do get a bit of both on Twitter, which is at least refreshing, but I tend not to watch it because it's the same thing and they tend to be fairly pathetic. And the thing with Twitter now is you can't read it without logging in. I think that, you know... Once you do that, the site has no value because the only people you, you you really are preaching to is the choir because the people you want to preach to are not members of Twitter. Anyway, something else. So we've done some damage over there, but I want to, I want to break, break this front off. But the thing is, we're a bit stuffed. I've go for the tanks. I should have maybe focus more. Let's do. Let's see what we can do here. See so if we can split it if we're lucky. 3.5 against that tank so we did a lot more damage against the tank because tanks are usually actually get a reduction they went through the minefield so much so that i think we're going to use the lancet on this stack so i've deliberately not given them a lot of lancets because i think we can safely you know what i'm trying to hope is that they do some damage <laughs> <laughs> it was shot down. We lost a lancet. Oh, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Suicide trains. Uh, that's interesting, actually. Presumably, it means our lancet spotter and was destroyed or <laughs> something like that. Oh God! Now we've just got artillery. Well, let's at least see whether we can destroy this. Okay, so what we didn't do as well. We could maybe. Oh, how much is this tank on? Four point five. See, that didn't do two point two because it was it was artillery on tank. The tank gets it halved or something. So, to be quite honest, they've gone through the minefield at a cost, and they're left in reasonable water. We really should have focused all our efforts on this and not so much this. Um, we don't have anything else. We don't have really anything here, but I think they're coming up with their attack here. So I think we're going to move these things so that we can position ourselves to take that front. And I'm also going to come up here don't need to do it quite like that do we right and that's that and we've got some units here i'll we'll leave those as a reserve probably going to leave that as a reserve as well we're going to have a problem here so it's now the ukrainian turn okay Now, the thing is, I have something to read there, a little sneaky bite. Um, I'm in two minds as to how to play this, because what I think, the point of what I'm doing here is to sort of demonstrate that if you have a smaller scenario and a smaller amount of units, we can maybe get to the front, but the, that armoured unit is, you know, nearly 50% down, no matter how you look at it. And he's okay, but you know he's not going to be again next turn. Um, so if we consider that we've already done destroyed all this, so we, if what I'm saying is, if you ignore the reinforcements and you ignore these, because these are engineers, I think, or as a mixture, 
if you ignore these, you could say, well, this is what they've been doing. You know, they've been doing this, and then everything's being blown up, and then they've been retreating. Whereas, what if what they do is what they've done with today, and send in instead of twenty, to send in one hundred armored vehicles. You know, when these ones get blown up. Yeah, you know, something will happen, like the Russians mysteriously lost the ability to, you know, for one of their Lancet things. And that's actually going to hurt them, you know, because I only gave them four. <laughs> I think it's either four or five, and it's, you know, it's down, down to three or four. And it's actually quite rare for them to be shot down, so. But, let's, so let's, let's assume that we're not using these at this moment, because I don't want to play forever anyway. So we'll just concentrate with what we've got. But obviously we've got a lot of these little silly drones. So we're going to drop these bombs into the trenches. And we've seen loads of those videos. <laughs> they lost the drone. <laughs> that was aborted. Quarter strength. Well, it's not doing very well. These people are probably saying, why us? Why don't you bomb someone else? But this is the heavy artillery. 0.9, 1.4, so now these trenches are just being blown to bits. Now I am going to really try to get rid of that unit, and I failed, so I lost, wasted a lot of time, what's he on now? Nine. So I think we can drive our tank through it now, and I don't think we need anything else. Just our tank will do. Seven, even our beaten up tank with three, three versus point three. But now we can drive in there. We can drive through. So we've broken through a field line near this town. We haven't got to the town yet. And I think what the Russians would probably done they probably have fallback positions I could probably put another trench along here or something you know we're not really going to get that far but I think we're lucky there to have done that but we've got a breakthrough and I think that the thing to do is to sort of consider what we do with that and another thing to bear in mind is that we didn't attack the Russians didn't attack these engineers we might have been able to knock them out but we've got loads more engineers coming in but um, so it's again, it's, it's, it's a case of what you choose. So when we see these burning tanks on, on places like South Front or something, all you're seeing are the ones that we blew up. What we're not seeing is the one they didn't have the resources to blow up. Like over here, we're not seeing the action. You know, there were a couple of other videos I saw recently about a, um, a Russian unit being ambushed. A Russian, there was sort of like this little APC. And it, somehow it, going down a road it got shot at and it stopped and they all jumped out but it was a bit of an ambush apparently and so there were all these little soldiers crawling around on the side of the road and I think they all died I don't know but um, it was strange to watch them moving around because it looked just like one of those you, you know those sort of computer games where you see the guys sort of running moving around just sort of rolling around and sometimes pivoting from one side to the other it looked ex exactly like it i always thought people don't behave like that on the ground when they're sort of lying prone but they were but anyway that's something else now the thing is what we've got to consider is what we want to do with this breakthrough do we want to try and take another trench hex or do we want to sort of break through and just maybe sort of plow all the way through here because we could try that but I think what we're going to do so we've got him as well so we've got there we've got two units there two so we've actually got a back line there look so I'm gonna move I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take these two things out 
I mean, when I say try, I mean, I'll be able to do it. So they haven't been blown up, so maybe I should have focused on blowing them up. I've gone through that one already, though, so... So we cleared the mines on that road now. Opening it up. So has he got more than four? He does, so he can have two attacks. So here come the Ukrainians. I think I'm not going to put the armor in. Because if this is an exchange, I'll lose it. And I think we're already going to get good odds. Let's see. Yeah, seven to one. How come he's only got one movement? Oh, that's because he was in the attack. Right, that's frustrating. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here. Okay. So now we can move him there. Him there, and we're stuck there. That is frustrating. <sighs> Messed up there, really, because I could have brought him down here and into there. But that's how it works, you see. You mess up from time to time. Now, We can try and advance through the minefields, point four damage. Oh, he got through without any damage. We're just driving through the minefield. Who needs engineers? I did think of trying to put something in there. He got a lot of damage that time. That means that as you go through it, the minefield becomes less dense because obviously you're using the mines up. But again, that's more programming that I can't be bothered to do. Not at this stage anyway. But um, And also I should do it so that the Russians can go through their own minefields, but all oh, that's again more programming. Let's support them with these guys. So a couple of legs gone there. Although I did say I wasn't going to use those reserves, but... Hmm. Let's leave them there for the time being. Okay, so the Russians only have three lancets. Okay. Well... We need to recapture our trenches. We've got pressure here and pressure here. Let's see what we can do some knock up the damage with the lancet here. One. Okay, 4.75. Let's use another one. We destroyed that unit with our lancets we got artillery coming in 2.1 but that didn't knock wouldn't have knocked it up actually 2.1 5.2 so he's gonna to have to start doing some morale checks but this try these ones, two on each of these, 
Now he might go sooner rather than later. Yep. That's good for the Russians. So we can now... So we can pound this other unit. Okay. So he's at 5.2. Which is unfortunate because he's still over 5. Oh no, he's only at 2. That means we should be able to attack him and get our irregular odds. If we don't, we're screwed. It's either going to be sort of like 30 to two and a half or six to two and a half plus their defenses. Yeah, so we've got that and we destroyed the armor, but we can't move. <laughs> But he should be able to maneuver across and he should be able to come out here. And we should be able to push them back. So we've got a real dynamic sort of 6 to 1 DR. So we pushed him away. It's a bit of a long shot. 4 to 1 in exchange. Okay. Let's reinforce this line and push these guys back if we can. <clears throat> and can we do anything? I don't think we can attack that armor really. But I think that we've actually done quite well. relatively speaking from the point of view that you know we've pushed them out we've done a lot of damage with our smaller force but smaller more powerful force um, demonstrate the power of the Lancet by by, by notion of, of the fact that we lost one and that's her um, I, I think I might go in there and I could probably put some code in that makes it, if it's a Lancer, you don't get the D, you, you don't lose it. It just gets um, ignored, that result. I think I might do that because um, otherwise it sort, sort of doesn't make sense because they're suicide drones anyway. <laughs> Not supposed to come back. Um Okay, so now it's the... I won't bother moving anything else. I don't think there is anything else that can really be moved. So... So now the Ukrainians, they really want to sort of try to push this. Now we they're back to where they were. Lost a lot of stuff. But they've got some reinforcements coming on there. This front is getting all stuck in the whatever. But we might be able to push through here. We've got one chance to do that. So let's see what damage, what we want to do over here. We're going to have to split it really. So I think we'll have to go 50-50 really. See whether we can push this unit out. There's two in there, we don't want that, so we want this. And another thing I'm trying to sort of, not so much prove, but, you know, sort of reflect is that, the last one here, is, is that the Russians don't have any armor. You know, it's all it's all irregular, and that means that they just dispersed infantry. And I've done that deliberately because um, because I think what, what, what we're finding in this war is it, it the infantry are almost just token resistance. They just sit there in the trenches, and yeah, you've got to fight them. You've got to fight them out of the trenches. You've got to fight them out of the urban areas. Um, but they just simply all they mean is you can't just walk through. 
because there's a force resisting you no matter how small and puny it is and it's it's difficult to get to so you've got to spend a lot of time getting there and in that time in that delay in that time you get blown up by the minefields obviously getting there and then they can pick you off with their you know precision you know indirect fire the precision you know drones so to speak so these are just holding them back it's it's the artillery now that's going to do the damage on this line let's see what happens 1.3 so he's worth 3.7 i'll go for one more on here because i want an edge 0.45 so let's push him up to four and we do the rest the other two on here because we've got more units to choose from 2.9 3.9 so we've only got one unit to try this with so this is a bit of a long shot but this is just tanks charging the trenches and we'd failed that was an exchange so that's bad and what we've we got here well we're going to have to move these engineers possibly there possibly there leaving us some tanks to storm Let's actually do it like this. We need some irregular support there. Okay. So again, we don't know if we anything I can get in there. Oh well. So we're just driving through the minefields. Got a safe route here, so we're not going to send him through the minefields. We'll send him that way. And that's that. So the Russian response to that, well, they've got a serious armoured problem here. And that's quite a nice stack, so we're going to use it out. Lancet's there. Look at that, 5.73, and no effect. Look at that. Those lances are actually proving quite nice in the game wise, uh, but it doesn't mean we have still got this stack here, which is mostly untouched. So we need more lances. This is the thing that I'm sort of getting to really, 
and I keep using the reference to the south front because I don't really look at too many sites but on there they only show the videos where they're actually blowing the tanks up what they're missing is the fact that there are other areas where they haven't blown them up they're just driving around like it's a nice sunny day obviously they're getting blown up with mines I've seen one of those happen today He was just sort of reversing into a field and blew up. So they're probably not worth a great deal, but we've got we're sort of stuck over here really because we've got this massive stack here now. So unfortunately for the Russians, there's a breakthrough. Because we're not going to be able to attack that. Might be able to get him out. Push him back. Yep. And might be able to push him back. What's in there? Okay, so we're... done a bit so it's all down to what the Ukrainians can do now exploiting like to get through 3.5 what I really need to do is to break that not entrenched so it should be easier to damage okay let's just sort of use some artillery So we're getting a real breakthrough here. Clearing a path. be nice to push these out and we can just because we're always going to have a zone of control there but Interesting.
So we've managed, next time we'll be able to drive our armor all over this area, if it survives, you see, that's the thing. So we've got a real dynamic here that sort of could go both ways. It's quite <laughs> exciting, really. Um, I've always enjoyed these games. It seems that I haven't played as much as I could have, and I start to wonder what I've been missing out on, really. It seemed I was always there for nothing at all during the Syrian the Yemen Wars. I was going to do the, uh, the um, is it the Sudan one? I can never remember the name of it. It's 2023 Sudan conflict. <clears throat> because apparently um, it's really interesting. <laughs> The green is all the rapid support forces. So there's obviously a lot going on there, and I'm missing out on that as well. <laughs> missing out on everything. Uh, so, it's the Ukrainian turn, and that's it. Oh. See, this is sort of what I'm talking about. You, you you fight your way through, and then you you have a force to sort of come through and keep the pressure up. I'm gonna do this rapidly. I'm not gonna bother with it. What have we got over here? We did actually put them there for the express purpose of trying to break through. Oh no. Right, let's just move swiftly on. No depressions. Okay, well, we'll see what the Lancet does in the open. 1.25. 9.25. So we can get this irregular unit to attack him. This beaten up regular unit. 4 to 1. Okay. Which is fine really because now we've got a huge artillery stack that we can target into there. We've routed that armoured unit that was in perfect health at the beginning of the turn. Right, so they're sort of, unfortunately, still in reasonable health. Uh, we should be able to f push him back. We might be able to do some damage over here. But... <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, I clearly didn't think that through. We might be able to push push these Russians back, these Ukraine. 
One to one. Oh, we got a DR there. That was convenient. Let's see what we can do here. Three to one in exchange. Okay, well, we've got more units we can use. So we'll push their engineers back. But there is not really anything. There's armor in there. We can't attack that. But we can sort of stop them from exploiting, I guess. Well, that's it, really. I actually missed, I can miss, misread the thing. Yes, the other day when I did my last video, when it said 50, uh, 51, I thought it said 61. So I've only got a few minutes left. So it's the Ukrainian turn now. So there was a big mistake over here, which is what you're looking for in war as much as anything. But I'm going to make this last turn, see whether we can break through. And we should be able to. Three is fresh. He's 6.5. So we might be able to get him to rout because he will do a morale check when he gets a bomb thrown on him. Ah, oh, too much. Let's see if we can just push him away with our irregulars. Yeah, rout, he routes now. So we need to clear, ideally, this hex here. So let's. And let's put some artillery on them. <sighs> Got to push through. Because I want to, I think I'm going to try and get rid of that. there I won't move him I'll move him there him there and him there and attack with all the irregulars bit of a squeeze a 5 to 1 DR DE so, what that means is now this guy, can, <laughs> look at that, uh, so this means the Ukrainians have got a major victory, They've broken through that line with one unit, now we're going to have to fight through. Let's see what damage we can do over here. Point four five zero point two artillery. We need some point fives or ones. Totally balls that up. I thought I was doing the artillery, <laughs> and I just sent him through on there. I sent them through on their own. Oh God, what a waste! And what they would have been on one point seven five, so it probably wouldn't have been that great. I should have focused that over here. I should be able to get him to attack him, freeing him up for an exploit. Get 
giving me an armoured force in the middle. Right, well it's 56, I'm going to leave it at that because um, I can spend the next four minutes trying to tidy things up. Uh, I won't press the go to, yeah, we've sort of broken through but I don't think, we don't have any more reinforcements coming on. The Russians messed up there but so did the Ukrainians, so we did, there was no breakthrough here but we got a, we got units coming in to take whatever it is, Starom Nyosko. Star on this guy, whatever. It's still going to come down to a lot of um, what either side can do with the artillery, because they've still got their um, their lancets. We've lost loads of armor, and I think it's a really good representation of what's been happening actually. Um, I thought I'd given them too much, but I think I've got given them a good balance because clearly they need more. They need fresh units to come through to break through that line. Um, just for the hell of it. So that's what the Russians, so the Russians have still got, you know, effective punch. So I don't think the Ukrainians are going to be able to really exploit this. The only thing that you could say is that they will probably, might be able to get in here and, but they've still got so many units here. It's not as though the Ukrainians now just have to wipe them out um, because, you know, that's not been touched. But I mean, in one turn, they could probably remove that with their lancets. But anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's interesting. Um, hopefully I can do lots more smaller ones like this and uh, get my rate of game production up a bit considering we've got the biggest war ever but I thought <laughs> I'd be into that and I'll speak to you later cheerio